Dwayne Lesner here. Today we're going to take a look at extending our Layer 2 subnet on-prem and moving that into Azure. We have our Nutanix Cloud Cluster already deployed. It's running Flow Virtual Networking, same with on-prem. And we're going to extend that subnet so when we migrate or have a DR event, our virtual machines do not have to re-IP any of their workloads, which is a huge benefit for application owners not having to do rigorous testing when those events happen. So let's get started. Stretching our on-prem subnet into Azure, we have the same subnet on both sides. The name does not have to be the same, but you do need the same side range. And then we're going to deploy local and remote gateways. We've already done this. We're using a VTAP, which is the preferred method if we already have two connected data centers. You may choose a VPN option uh, if you want to ensure maybe traffic is not going to be intercepted. I'm pretty feel secure in my choice here. The uh, subnet extension is done through Prism Central. Uh, once you have the local and the remote gateways up, you'll be able to stretch the network. Once our network is stretched on both sides, so you know IPs are active on either side, we can create a recovery plan, through which we already have a protection policy with the replicated VMs. So we just need to migrate or uh, provide a DR option. So the recovery plan is what gives us the DR orchestration. And then we're going to fail over those virtual machines into Azure from on-prem while keeping their IP addresses. <clears throat> so here is a diagram of our environment. We have Azure up top. We have our on-prem down below. We see that we have our local and remote gateway have already been deployed. When you deploy your gateway, it will create this Nutanix uh, VPN internal. So we have one showing up on both sides. It's just uh, another uh, VPC subnet. Your local gateway will have an address uh, internally for it. It will also grab an address from your external subnet. So on-prem, you need to have this external subnet already created. Uh, it's backed by a VLAN. And then on the Azure side, the local gateway, it grabs uh, an IP address from the native Azure subnet. This native Azure subnet is also the same as our Flow Gateway VM, which we've just talked about in other videos on this playlist. So you can, it'll grab an address from here uh, to so they can talk to each other. And then uh, at this point, we're ready to stretch the networks. When we go to stretch the networks with the VTAP, it will ask for an address from that subnet. So it needs to be something that's not used. So we got dot six in Azure. We have dot seven in on-prem in the diagram. Um, so long, long as they're unique, the subnet itself, uh, same side range on both sides. You'll see that the names are different. So let's go into Prism Central. Our on-prem Prism Central, we have under network and security, we can go into our connectivity. This menu allows you to deploy the local and the remote gateway. So our local gateway has already been deployed. We can see that uh, external address, which comes from our external backed VLAN network. And likewise, if we go into this is the Azure Prism Central, which gets deployed when you create your cluster. And if we go to connectivity here, and then we also have our local and remote gateways already created. And here we've already put in as our service IP. We're pointing that back to our floating IP from on-prem for the remote and then on the local gateway. So if we, it has a floating IP, which is from the same range as our Flow Gateway virtual machine. So now we just have to do the subnet extension. So cross availability zones is for, because we have Nutanix on both sides, we have a bit more information from pairing the two Prism Centrals together, which is part of the DR process. Or, But you can also do this with third party uh, if you have a VTAP somewhere else that you want to connect to. Uh, cross availability zones, we're selecting VTAP because our networks are already connected via VPN. 
uh, on our on-prem side, we do overlay our private subnet. We already have our network uh, selected in Azure. The Azure PC shows up here because we're paired together. Pick our user VPC. So we have the same CIDR range selected. Uh, we'll give this one dot seven. Then our Azure one will give dot six. So these addresses are for the VTAP, which will show up on our local gateway virtual machine as noted in the, the diagram. Um, and then we just have to give a unique identifier for our v v VXLAN and then hit save. <clears throat> this will extend our subnet to either side. So if a virtual machine needs to access it on the other side, we're going to be OK. It'll you know route the traffic uh, through the, the VTAP. So it's creating it for us. Our subnet extension has finished. So if we, we have all of the information loaded and then we can, if we go on to the Azure side, which we are now, uh, we'll see it loaded here as well. So now in our on-prem setup, we need to create the recovery plan. So we'll create a new recovery plan. Our on-prem location, our Azure PC, we hit next. We add in VMs. So we have three VMs, which we'll go take a look at their IPs in a second. Um, so we could have multiple stages here, but that's a topic for another day. So we can set up our production and test failover networks. We're just going to do everything with our overlay network. Uh, typically, you would put in a different test network, which is pretty easy to do with Flow Virtual Networking. So we're going to maintain our IPs. We have to make sure that we hit this box, Stretch Networks. This is um, going to allow us to uh, skip a validation step, which doesn't make sense since we're maintaining our IP addresses. We hit Done. Uh, once this is created, it, uh, the two Prism Centrals will sync information uh, to each other. On our Azure environment, the three, or sorry, the on-prem environment, we have these uh, three VMs. We had this app scan, insights, so 195, 196, and we also have uh, the SQL prod that we're moving across, 197. Uh, so as we move them, though, you will uh, be able to maintain their IP addresses, and then these VMs could contact them uh, from on-prem into Azure. So on our Azure PC, we're going to run the recovery plan, hit failover. We have our three virtual machines, we hit failover. There is more uh, on the Azure playlist. We go through doing the DR setup, so you can check that out again as well. So the failover has kicked off. We can take a look at, if we go to tasks, we can see the tasks as they're completing. So the migrating part is the replication, and then we'll see when they uh, power on as well. So two of the virtual machines have finished replicating and are about to turn on. We're just waiting for this Insights VM. Our virtual machines have failed over and powered on. Now let's take a look at the virtual machines and ensure they've maintained their IPs. Check out our virtual machine. So still in the Azure Prism Central, go to VMs. So we have our three VMs, 95, 196, and 197. They're up and running and their IP addresses are the same. We are finished here. Extending your layer two subnet into Azure with Flow Virtual Networking is an easy process and it allows your application teams to DR or migrate their workloads without a lot of testing. See you in the next video.